Hello everybody, how are we? Uh, my name is John McCauley, I'm from Trinity College Dublin, uh, Ireland. And um, my research is a little bit different from what, from what a lot of uh, work has been presented at LAC. Um, I'm specifically interested in online communities, but how online communities learn, so how they learn to adapt to change, uh, uh, what we could consider as organisational learning. So key to organisational learning is this idea of reflection, reflection in a shared context, it's how people learn to, learn to manage the system, manage the community as it begins to develop over time. So just a brief overview, I'll firstly give a, a little bit of background, um, I'll describe the problem, flesh it out a little bit, um, then I'll describe, describe our research question and some objectives that we outlined to address this research question. Um, I'll briefly touch on related work just to, to expand on it a little bit. Then I'll describe the tool. It's a visual analytic tool that I developed. It's called explore.su. Um, and we developed it to, to, to essentially explore the process of reflection in the super user online community. Um, then I'll describe the evaluation, how we evaluated this, and present the results, and then discuss some future work, which is really current work. So background. Online communities now make stuff. They're no longer just places where people get together and have discussion um, a lot for like-minded people to engage in discussion, um, as was kind of originally put forth by Howard Rheingold in 1999, the virtual community. Now online communities create to the contribu or contribute to the creation of media and software artifacts, and this is on a large scale. Um, Linux, Wikipedia, Superuser, Local Motors, all examples of communities where they come together and create things. Linux, for example, is a is a, a huge operating system that was began in 1992 by a loosely coupled group of developers and has since gone on to challenge Microsoft in, the, in the, both the server and desktop markets. Uh, Wikipedia knows, needs no introduction, I'd imagine, started in 2001 by Larry Sanger and Jimmy Wales. Um, very small investment, very simple technical tune, and it's developed into the, the world's leading, uh, leading encyclopedia. I know people have different... Uh, uh, opinions about that. Super user is part of a, a new collection of online communities which are question answer communities. Um, it's part of a, a, a network of communities called the Stack Exchange Network. And they, they, what's interesting about this community is it drew a lot from Wikipedia, it drew a lot of the social media innovations and brought it into the question answer process. And finally Local Motors is, a, is, a, is another interesting type of online community because it uses, or well it's, it's not really an online community, but it uses an online community to bootstrap the manufacturing of cars in America. So what all these communities have in common is what was described by uh, Benkler in 2002 as common space peer production. Interaction, across, interaction is generally computer mediated. They share a lot of, these, share a lot of common characteristics. So interaction across, the, across, across this community is uh, computer mediated. They're large scale, distributed, network based and fluid. They don't have the same management hierarchies that exist in traditional bricks and mortar organizations. They share a common purpose which is governed by informal norms and formal policies. But this, when I say they're governed, I don't mean that there's a kind of intent towards authority. There's a framework put in place that allows relationships to develop between autonomous individuals. Participation is voluntary and reward is non-monetary, but they are subject to continuous change. They're evolving systems that are constantly changing. And as a consequence, they're prone to a lot of threats and a lot of vulnerabilities. For example, vandalism is a constant problem in Wikipedia. They can have sudden drops in, in contribution rates. They can have a sudden influx of new users, which will take the idea of a very small hamlet-like community and turn it into this kind of huge, uh, huge conglomeration. There are, they often have intricate and unwritten cultural policies in place, which can serve to inhibit the enculturation of new users and, 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 and uh, result in a decre decrease in contribution rates. And also technical change that can be not well understood can be implemented in one of these communities, and that can have a dire social consequence. So how do these communities currently learn? A lot of online communities, a lot of these common space peer production hive off a little section of their community is where they discuss community manners. It's where reflection takes place. It's where they get together and they say, okay, what's going on? How do we feel about this? And how to make changes to the community infrastructure, both social and technical changes. However, this is currently based on experiential knowledge. People experience something, they intuit it, then they go and they share it, it's integrated at a group level, and then it can be debated and discussed across these computer mediated communication channels and then this has risen to an institutional level and can result in the, in the implementation of a new policy. So we got this, what, what we have is essentially an experiential based approach to how the community learns. There's little objective analysis. There's no data driven or evidence based learning. And this is power, prone to the same problems of any kind of human interpretation. There can be uh, problems around power relations 
or just uh, badly thought out uh, policy decisions based on experience. However, at the same time, all the activity in every online community is stored for, perpe for perpetuity, basically. Uh, and, and now it's probably, in, in many communities, public available. So how can we kind of use, the, use the, the huge wealth of knowledge that we have in some of these communities and provide visualization tools, provide analytic tools, can move the learning process, the organizational learning process, from an experiential-based approach to one that is based on objective analysis? So that's my research question. To what extent can visual analytics support the reflection in online communities? Sorry, I'll just... There we go. So to address this research question, we uh, identified uh, a number of objectives. Firstly, we wanted to build a visual, visual analytics tool that provided access to the social and temporal patterns of an online community. This also provided access to the different user actions that are, in a user, that, are in a, that are in an online community. We also wanted to embed this visual analytics tool into a collaborative architecture so that not only could uh, users reflect on the actu actual activity of their group, but they could also annotate, bookmark, and comment on this activity. And then finally, we wanted to evaluate this system. We want to evaluate for, for the ability of a visual analytics tool to, to support reflection in an online community. And we, we aspire to do this in a real-world evaluation with a large 50,000 user online community called superuser.com. So I'll just briefly go through the related work section um, to give a kind of an idea of some of the approaches there are to, vi to visualizing online communities and the approaches that we took when we were building our visual analytics tool. So there's a lot of work now in visualizing online communities. It's a very hot topic. Um, it kind of started out, there's two basic approaches. You can visualize the activity of a community, or you can visualize the connections between the community. Visualizing the activity, uh, for example, are, are some, of the, some of the current visualizations here. We've got people garden, where uh, users are represented as flowers, and then very busy communities look like blooming, blooming and active, uh, active gardens. Then we've got a chromogram visualization down here on the left, which visualizes the editor activity of different, of different editors in Wikipedia. So very quickly, you can contrast, compare and contrast how people are behaving in this community. Up on the right, we have a, a kind of an advanced scatter plot visualization, which will cluster user activity based, based on their contribution rates to the community. So again, we can see very quickly how people contribute to the community. What is, how do they behave? What is their uh, contribution to the actual community? Then the other approach is based on connections. And this is where we kind of look at the connections between different communities. And this is very, uh, very important in social network visualization. There's two main approaches to visualizing, uh, visual, uh, to using social network visualization. One is the graph-based approach, and the second is the matrix. The graph-based approach is a lot more familiar and has become very popular on the web, but has problems with very large networks. It also doesn't render uh, change between, ch doesn't render change very well, so if you're trying to look at a network change over time, a graph-based approach isn't a good approach to take. A matrix, on the other hand, can render very large networks for, uh, with a lot more readability. And also you can, because each node is, uh, is assigned a place in, a place in space, um, managing change in this network is a lot easier, is a lot more, e is a lot easier to do. At the same time, there's a lot of work done around the idea of social data analysis. This is where we take some, some analytics tools and we provide them into the hands of the community. We democratize the democratize the analytic process. So this was started by a guy called Mark Wattenberg in, in uh, 2003, where he developed a very simple visualization called Name Voyager, which helped people to decide baby names and published it on the web. It had a million hits and uh, had a huge response. And he realized that these kind of tools, people are interested in. People want to use these kind of tools to understand the data. People want to share these kind of tools, and people want to make use of them together. So this kind of led to the development of Many Eyes, which a lot of people might be familiar with, where you can upload your data set and share it with your friends or, or share it with other people in the community and then collectively analyze and interpret that data set. Then later work again by the same group was by Jeff here on his PhD, which was called uh, Sense.us, where they collectively analyzed, uh, they built a visualization in a collaborative visualization environment where they could uh, collectively analyze uh, the US census data. And what they took was a lot of the more simple tools that have been developed in many eyes and applied a lot more advanced uh, analytic techniques. So you could point and you could, 
points within the visualization. You could bookmark a visualization. You could chain together different approaches to reasoning and use that to form an argument within the, vis within the whole visualization environment. So we, we drew from both of these approaches. We drew from how we currently represent online communities, how we kind of currently visualize online communities, and also how people are providing these sort of tools for communities to analyze data. And we developed explore.su. Explore.su was developed on, we used the superuser.com online community. There's a question and answer community which is over 50,000 users. It's for, it's, it's for a, uh, enthusiasts of computer hardware and computer software. And what's interesting about this community is, as I said, it's drawn from a lot of the innovations that started out in Wikipedia. So it's collaboratively edited. It's not just people submit answers, people also revise posts and constantly revise and change posts. It's got, a ver it's got what's called gamification, which is how people are awarded or attributed, um, attributed reputation for if they behave in a pro-social way in the community. So you can develop, a, you can develop a, a very high reputation model within this community. And that can actually lead to jobs and can lead to, uh, lead to contracts within the, within the commuter industry. And what's even more interesting in regards to my research is they have this idea of a meta site. And a meta site is a place where people come together and they can talk about the actual community. So it's a place where community discuss community matters. And this is where the reflection will take place. They also, this, is, this idea started out as the Wikipedia village pump. Um, where we provide, hive off a little area of the community and it's where people go to discuss and analyze how the actual community is performing. So with Explore.su we aimed, we aimed to provide access to the social and temporal patterns in the community. We used the matrix-based visualization and we represented four different user actions. So we could see the revision patterns in the community, we could see the uh, question-answer patterns in the community, we could see the commenting patterns in the community and we could see accepted answers in the community. Um, we also provide a timeline which would let you update the matrix, uh, would let the user update the matrix dynamically. Um, we have annotation and collaboration tools so people could point out points of interest or highlight points of interest, draw on the visualization, and then they could attach this visualization as a bookmark and bring it into the discussion, bring it into that moment of reflect, that point of reflection. And then, of course, there was thread of discussion list, list on the right. So, how do we evaluate explore.su? Evaluating visualization is quite difficult. Visual analytics applications are very difficult also because you've got the added, the added, um, added, uh, added need to evaluate the analytic process, the sense making. But we also wanted to evaluate the ability of these kind of visualizations to promote discussion, to promote reflection in online communities, to make people actually think, oh, okay, is this how we're behaving? Is this is something that we want to address? So we, we, we followed Jeff Heer's approach to social data analysis and, and performed a, a two-stage evaluation. Now, we did this completely in the wild as well. Well, not the initial one, but the second one we did completely in the wild. And this, the, the environment is, is as I said, web-based. So we conducted first was an initial pilot study with members of the lab, members from the lab. And uh, we just wanted to find out, was the visualization environment itself generally comprehensible? Did it make sense? Was it intuitive? Was there any uh, glaring usability issues which we hadn't thought out? Um, everyone was seemed happy enough. There were some issues around uh, providing better access, uh, providing more information at certain points, and providing better drill down mechanisms. So we took that information and we, we, uh, we set, set it about and built a second iteration of the product. Um, and then we conducted a two week exploratory user study with the superuser.com uh, super online community. We contacted the moderators, we told them what we were doing. We, uh, we asked them would they be interested in it, they thought it was a great idea, so they placed an advert on the community and it was sticky for two, they said they placed it up for sticky for two weeks and then two interesting things happened. Firstly, people, there, each of these communities seem to have, have their own chat room and a lot of moderators hang out there and they talk and they chill out and they, they discuss different aspects of the community. Um, and what happened was once it, well, ad, once it was advertised, the moderators went and took screenshots from the visualization and brought it into the chat room and discussed it there. So they didn't bother going to the tool, they weren't particularly that interested, but they were interested in the idea and it sparked off some debate about how, how revision is organized in the community. Are people with too low a reputation not being encouraged to do enough revision in the community? Um, so immediately there was a, for us there was a certain amount of validation for the approach. Um, and it, you, you're gonna, I, found, I found that we're going to have these kind of, when you're, when you're conducting a, a, an evaluation in this way, you're going to have these kind of serendipitous things happen, I suppose. Um, but then also what happened was the advert was taken down after two weeks, so tw after, sorry, about 24 hours. So 28 people signed in, 17 people completed the evaluation. 
but um, only uh, but we only ended up with 17. Out of 17, they were asked to they were asked to uh, they, they were asked to sign in. They were presented with a video tutorial. They were asked to familiarise themselves with the visualisation, and then they were asked to submit a number of comments based on their understanding of the activity and the visualisations. Um, After that, they were presented with two questionnaires, one which was just a general impressions questionnaire, and the second was a simple usability survey, which allowed us to assess the usability of the entire system. Um, results. Having gathered all the comments from the, from after the two-week per period, we gathered all the comments. It was about 60 comments in all, and we conducted a content analysis across the comments. We used a coding scheme that was developed by Hare for his previous work on social data analysis. And out of that, they had 11 different categories that they had identified. Out of those 11, we found that there was only seven that were actually pertinent to, our, to the comments that we used. We used the two co coders to codify up the, the comments, and uh, we had an interrater reliability of 0.77. So out of the different comments, we found that the majority of them were just observational. People just suggested, oh, look at this, such and such has happened in the community. Oh, look, there's a the majority, majority of people with a high reputation revise a lot of the majority of people with a low reputation. Or, or I noticed that on Sundays, some people said that there's not a lot of people in the community, but that's because a lot of people are at work when they're in these sorts of communities. Um, however, some people did spark off more interesting debate. Um, for instance, someone said a lot of the activity happens at certain levels of reputation, or that um, I would suggest that the Glove activity is posted because there's, there's, comments being, there's posts being migrated from other types of community in the Stack Exchange network. Um, and also, while, while, a lot of, uh, while a lot of new users aren't revising older users' posts, they theoretically can, and maybe this is something we want to look at. So what we learned from this approach. Our actual visualization, we found, had limited insight. It was a, we took a certain approach to how we, how we, how we visualise the community, and because, that, because of that approach, people found that it actually only provided an overview of the community. It didn't allow people to get into the data and actually feel, feel, feel that this data was, that they could actually explore the data more, that they could understand the data more. Also, we found that, uh, I, well, like, who cares about these types of, of visualisation? Who cares about these in online communities? I had a, a kind of a very... Um, uh, a kind of summer 68 view of uh, online communities that a lot of people want to find out what's going on. A lot of people are interested, but in reality, contribution rates in online communities kind of follow a very, uh, very defined and well, well established pattern. Um, some people describe it as a power law, but 1%, 10%, 20% of people in online communities contribute to the vast majority of content. So all the rest, the long tail of the community, the majority of them are only there for information seeking or information providing purposes. The majority of them actually are actually only there to find out their answer to an actual problem. Um, so while, while, online, while these kind of large peer-based networks have in theory that everybody can contribute and everybody's helping towards a, 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 a unified goal, in reality there's only a very small, a small number of people actually interested in the development and, and uh, the movement of the community into a certain direction. And this is reflected even if you did a, a statistical analysis of the actual meta sites. You'll find that com in comparison to the amount of people that contribute to the community overall, only a very small amount of people actually contribute to how the gov community is governed and how the community learns as an, as an actual organisation. And finally, the, the system's too complex for uh, a single evaluation strategy. So as opposed to kind of taking this computer science-based approach, which would be develop, a, develop an actual uh, system, go to the liter literature, develop a, a system, and then evaluate it with the community, um, I found that visual analytics applications, and that this is more broadly in any time that a visual analytics application is being applied, um, has too many points of failure. Essentially, requirements are needed. There needs to be a, an appropriate algorithm and design the visualization, the process of visualization needs to convey the, the information appropriately and also that has to be considered in the context of how it's going to be used. And finally, the interactivity. Uh, the, these aren't pictures that, these need to be interactive visualizations and so that will, uh, the interactivity has to aid the actual analysis process. And um, so a better, a better approach is to target each one of these different stages and then present the whole approach as a case study and then conduct an evaluation with the community at the end to establish how much that, that approach of visualization has promoted reflection in the community. So future work, which is more like current work. Uh, having done this, I went away and came back and said, OK, I want to develop a, an, an approach that's more useful, essentially, which is good. provides the community with more insight, but also cans the the, uh, the approach to analysis in a certain way that the users find it usable. 
so I'm currently working with the Semantic Online communities. They have a wide range of, of communities, question answer communities again, that they're interested in developing these sort of models that can support organizational learning within the community. Mm -hmm. However, as opposed to, as opposed to uh, working on very specific, uh, as, sorry, as opposed to building a, a complete model, I'm looking at very specific use cases of how we can apply simple visual, visual analytic tools to identify specific issues within communities and how that can be used to help and promote areas of reflection. This must be integrated into the everyday workflow of the community. It can't just be something that people, uh, if, if it's something that's proven to be successful, it can't just be something that's, uh, that's analyzed now and again, but actually has to be shareable and, and uh, referenceable within the actual community infrastructure. It has to support uh, historical analysis and temporal analysis. And finally, I'm in the process of conducting a case study, as I said, with the, with, with the semantic online communities. Questions? Uh, it was a bit of a whistle stop tour. I hope it was okay. Okay, I think, I think he's going to say, first of all, is I was surprised that you said that graphs are good for large networks to use matrices because matrices are n squared to represent and graphs can represent, I, I can't load in my graph into matrix software. Yeah, well it, it depends of course how big, how big your community is. In this I used an abstract, I used reputation to kind of abstract up uh, how the community is represented. Uh -huh. So I, I broke the community down uh, into blocks of matrix, and uh, sorry, into blocks of reputation and then used the matrix to represent you that. Use a coarser representation. Yeah, 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 it's a co most coarser representation. Um, you said that graphs aren't good for analyzing over time, but this is what I thought you were going to say. There's um, this uh, foresight graph layout approach where you you foresight where nodes, which nodes are going to come in the future, and then you keep them fixed in their position. Yeah. Just I, for your information, you may want to look into that. But the real thing I want to ask you is, well, um, in your, concerning your results, I mean, what did you expect? Because I, I didn't see you say anything about what – you said the purpose of the visualization basically was to expose patterns, but you didn't yeah. say what kind of patterns we're looking for. And you didn't say what purpose the users had in looking at the graphs. What were they trying to accomplish? So I think maybe if you can uh, yeah, have uh, more of an objective for the visualization, it might. The objective of the visualization was just to expose the temporal and social aspects of the community. So allow the, allow the, community, allow the users to actually see how the community is functioning over time and see how the, the relationships between the different sorts of user actions, uh, uh, the different types of user actions, are, are visible within the community. For example, revision patterns are very visible in the community, and when yeah. you compare that to common patterns, they're completely different distribution. Yeah, I'm a little worried that we too often rely on the pretty visualization to say, okay, we're gonna get something out of it. I realize that yeah. human visual system does great parallel processing and can discover things that we may not have found by pre-planned investigations, but um, on the other hand, Maybe we rely on that too much. No, I, 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 I okay. Yeah, okay. I, I think that's, that, that's why my, the approach I'm taking now is a very use case specific approach to kind of identify issues which community management, managers might feel and community stakeholders actually feel that visualization can, can support as opposed to taking this kind of one size fits all, is, which is what I originally kind of addressed. Hi. Okay, for the comment that I want to make, uh, can you go back to the future? Yeah. Uh, Work that just the future. Oh, back, to the, back to the past. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. No. Uh, I share with you the interest in these, uh, as we say, productive online communities, and mm. particularly for us, it's so um, suitable that they that they have all these data freely available. Mm. Very different from other communities that that are more and more protected against uh, downloads for these purposes. What I was surprised by was um, that that you directly went to went to intervention. Um, um, I think it would mm. probably be worthwhile to use that as an analyst um, first to see what you can get out, out of these visualizations. And that's why I said if you go to future work, there are yeah. some, um, some issues that you could directly predict um, so that you need the case studies, that you need the examples, the narratives that you can derive yourself from, yeah. from the data. I was really surprised, how can you directly go to intervention? That's quite courageous and um, well, yeah. maybe also a bit premature. Also, for instance, just, in, just a, a little um, 
detail, you, why did you use 24, 24 hour time windows? I mean, what, what was the empirical basis for that? Oh no, I didn't, they, well we could, it can also be stretched. Okay, so I just have it marked, I just have 24 hour, but it could be stretched. But I guess could, the, the whole complexity issue is suited to the 24 hour window, at least also how, how, you, how you presented it. And how you yeah, it. sorry, but you can't, it, it can be stretched, so you could, it, it could be uh -huh. stretched to different, different time periods. So you Did you have an, an idea about the, say, the, 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 the interesting time intervals on beforehand? Um, not really, no, to be honest See, with you. See, that would also be something that you could really investigate mm. on beforehand from an analytic perspective. So my comment, my, my overall comment would be I really w would uh, do some analytic studies before I, before I directly expose this information to the community. I think that's, that's pretty much what I, what I learned from this and, and taking yeah. the previous quest question also that uh, uh, that's why I'm, I'm addressing this as specific use cases as opposed to opposed to this kind of one size fits all. Hey. Hiya. Thank you very much. No problem.